all of us, I guess, as teachers, try try to, to do the best we can. And sometimes you can do only do so much, and students students run away with it. But probably one must keep on thinking about it, pursuing pursuing uh, in your own head, in your own teaching, about how, how, how to teach. Interviewing, analysis of interviews, analysis of focus groups, analysis of all kinds of qualitative data. Okay, and um, we've got time for about one or two more questions. Um, I ask if you have a question that you just align with the, the theme question, perhaps about the uh, experience of the research, or perhaps something that relates to your own uh, non-technical um, issues with research, personal issues that you have with research. Any questions along those lines, or any point of interest regarding his career? Well, sorry, I just perhaps just wanted to, to add to what Juana just said in terms of I often think like that with the interview, uh, the interview session and the way we ask questions, etc., can so often burn, uh, put burden and restrict the data, you know, this forced data. And I often wish, that's why a long while ago I started rather talking about conversations, this yeah. moment, although it's an interview, but for me there's a conversational um, stance to it. and, and well, in the presence of an audience as well. And I think it was often, especially with people busy developing the questionnaire, whether it's a semi-structured or a, that they're going to use for their interviews, I often find it so restricting. I just want to support what you just said. I think we can spend so much more time in terms of developing these skills within yeah. students and within ourselves yeah. constantly, and not just stay with, this is how a questionnaire looks like, this is the, how a focus group should be, coordinated, etc. I'm actually more interested in the parts that are not structured and that's not, in other words, all the unsaid things in the focus group interview, not so much what people... So if I may, maybe you're saying this in an indirect way, so there's, there's the how-to, but I've found that, for instance, in this, in this piece of all the other, so probably the most interesting part that doesn't, sometimes it gets in the paper, but many times it doesn't, is the research question. What is it that I want to know about this? What, you know, even when you have the, that data, uh, I probably want to do it right at the beginning. So I have this question. I want to ask, how, how, what does it mean to be white now? I mean, what did it mean to be white? What did it mean, what you can say, about identities? What does it mean to, to be a man? Or, so questions around, around me. And if I can get the question, if I can get the question, I think uh, as as clear and as succinct as possible, I, I, it, it runs for me through. I get the question, I see how other people have answered it, and around the question I structure the methodology. I, I structure how I'm going to, to get the answers to that. And some of, some of the time, increasingly, it's about, about conversation. Clearly it's about conversation. Uh, and, and one has to, has to, to to see, to see the relationship between the conversation and the questions that you want to ask. To ask. So people can say a lot of other things, but really in, in all that conversation, that's just one moment we want to follow up again and again. The conversations are great for that. I, I, I agree totally. Can I just, just also something else? Um, we also have a comment um, share, or sharing in, in a share of book with you, also a colleague of mine, and she spoke very highly of you. And what I was thinking about in terms of my reading about this interaction and the contextualization of data creation, and, and I haven't seen much of that in the develop other developments of psychology as well, in terms of clinical psychology, I haven't seen much of the interactional processes or conversational processes that we refer to. But the book of Boschlavik, um, I, I recently came across, and I don't know if you have similar references in terms of this a conversational context and what emerged in that context that should actually also be accounted as data in the data gathering process. Do you have any ideas or suggestions of more readings? Well, I, I, I will do that outside of this, but let me just say this. Uh, one of the students uh, whose thesis I read, a friend was supervising, had done a fantastic piece of work. I hope you know, students can do this. This is the creativity. But it, it, it demands the it demands uh, funds you if, if you are if you can defend it. What they did was I want to study white white women. I want to study white women and, and sexuality and all that. But I want to have dinner with, with my participants. So dinner, tapes with the food, 
So the conversation is happening while they're eating together. And, and mm -hmm. she was a bright student, so she, she was capable of extracting that, uh, the conversations happening all around the table. And it was a fantastic piece of work. It was really good piece of work. And I can, I can get the reference from that and what, 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 what she did. But as far as conversational analysis, I've, I've read, I've, uh, not recently, maybe over a year ago, one of the pieces that I thought was really great. I think it was, uh, it wasn't Mark but I, I'll, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Uh, and, and a colleague who did conversations, so this was unstructured in the sense that people calling the police about the neighbors as a nuisance. Those were natural conversations with the police, so a kind of 911 number. And what they did with that uh, was, was also great. I'm, I'll, I'll pick that up and, of course, I'm going to send it to you. I'm afraid that's all the time we have. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.